I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, the invitation to participate in this Oracle of Eye Innovations webinar and also acknowledge a financial interest in that I have a patent on extended depth of focus intraocular lenses which I've licensed to Rayner. Surgeons do have many choices today when selecting an intraocular lens and one of the most important is the optical principle they think best addresses their patient's need for unaided near vision following cataract surgery. An understanding of the optical principles of the different lenses is important as well as familiarity with clinical data, patient outcomes and even an element of philosophy in choosing an appropriate lens. One of my interests is astronomy, where the optical quality of the telescope lens is critical. One can evaluate the quality of the optics by examining the image of a single star using the adjustable focus of the eyepiece, similar to the adjustable focus of the human lens. Intraocular lenses, of course, do not have an adjustable focus and I recall vividly the excitement at the EIIC meeting in Copenhagen when the diffractive IOL was first presented as a solution to presbyopia following cataract surgery. I was one of the first surgeons to implant the 3M multifocal, but unfortunately the compromise in optical quality soon became apparent. With multifocals, the light energy is distributed to more than one focal plane with a loss to higher orders, resulting in a Faustian bargain and compromise in optical quality. This degradation in image quality of a multifocal implant compared to a monofocal is quite evident in this comparison of actual images of a Snellen chart as published in the JCRS in 2007. Patients are said to adjust the loss of contrast by so-called neuroadaptation. This process no doubt is assisted by the fact that for many they have already become accustomed to poor contrast and vision due to the cataract which then improves after surgery. Halos are unavoidable with a diffractive IOL including trifocals but do appear to be somewhat reduced with low ad bifocal implants as in this comparison published in 2015. Trifocal diffractive IOLs do provide some intermediate acuity compared to bifocal designs but this focal range still lacks contrast compared to near and distance. It's not that impressive. Clinically, wavefront aberrometers are able to provide an estimate of the point spread or modulation transfer function, but underestimate the effect of scatter and dysphotopsia associated with multifocal lenses. Double pass image visualization, however, is a useful device and provides a comprehensive optical quality analysis including the MTF and scatter of different intraocular lenses implanted in patients. As you can see in this 18 year old with a clear lens, the strel ratio and MTF are high, the scatter index is low and unimpaired in the presence of a planar contact lens. When a diffractive echelon contact lens is placed on the same eye, both the strel ratio and MTF decline, whilst the ocular scatter index in increases significantly to 0.8. If a pure vision aspheric contact lens with spherical aberration providing a relatively high 2.5 diopter reading ad is then placed on the eye, you can see that the strel ratio and MTF are reduced but the scatter index remains relatively low. When I finally inserted an aspheric contact lens with a low reading ad of one and a half diopters, the strel ratio, MTF and scatter was indistinguishable from the control. 
And when I looked at the simulated Snellen chart of the low ad aspheric versus the multifocal contact lens, it reminded me of the words of one of my favorite Rolling Stone songs, that sometimes you might find what you need, and indeed the concept of an extended depth of focus intraocular lens. The concept is simply to extend the single focus of a monofocal intraocular lens such as the Rain Array 1 to provide additional depth of focus as opposed to splitting the light rays as with a multifocal intraocular lens. It is possible to extend the depth of focus of an ROL with phase shift technology as used by Alcon or with low add diffractive bifocal or trifocal ROLs produced by AMO and Zeiss respectively. You don't need to resort to diffractive optics, however, and incorporating spherical aberration in the optic of an intraocular lens is another method of extending depth of focus using negative, or preferably positive, spherical aberration. Pinhole optics can be used to enhance the depth of focus <clears throat> as used in ROLs produced by AccuFocus. And finally, a rotationally asymmetric optic can also be used to extend the depth of focus. When selecting an extended depth of focus ROL, it is important to remember that actually the human eye is not a telescope. It has a continuous focus, variable pupil, cortical filters to diminish chromatic aberration, and a retinal architecture with the Stiles Crawford effect to compensate for spherical aberration. Positive spherical aberration has some unique characteristics, as you see in this comparison of an intraocular lens based on this principle, compared to an aberration-free spherical ROL or a trifocal ROL. The additional depth of focus provides a balance between perfect resolution and adequate depth of focus. With added defocus, the Landolt C simulation is readable over a larger dioptric range, and the focus shifts slightly more myopic. The aspheric anterior surface has a unique optic design, with an inner optic zone that utilizes fourth and sixth order high order positive spherical aberration, blending in an apodized fashion with the peripheral zone to extend depth of field without compromising visual acuity under low light conditions. This lens has been designed to meet the ANSI and ISO standards for a high quality monofocal intraocular lens. Most informative is the defocus curve created by plotting the logmar acuity obtained with progressive defocus in a trial frame. This test can demonstrate an enhanced depth of focus and suggest clinical situations where this type of intraocular lens could prove to be useful. The positive aspheric ROL has a significant extended depth of focus when compared to the defocus curve of a standard negative aspheric ROL implanted in the other eye in the series of 18 patients. Using this data, it is evident that there is a considerable overlap of the distance eye and near eye when a modest level of myopia is targeted in one eye, creating the potential for so-called blended vision. The blend zone is even more impressive and greater if a positive aspheric ROL is implanted in both eyes. This type of lens is therefore well suited to modest monovision as it increases the depth of focus, reduces the need for reading correction, and facilitates the potential for blended vision. The combined binocular defocus curve for modest monovision and the extended depth of focus intraocular lens is quite different to the previously published binocular defocus curve for a popular diffractive multifocal IOL. In particular, a positive aspheric IOL provides better intermediate acuity, which is important for so many of our daily activities. This lens may be an attractive alternative when distance vision is targeted in both eyes as the unaided distance security with the lens is relatively unimpaired 
with minor levels of my objective focus. I coined the term EDF, or Extended Depth of Focus, almost a decade ago now, and now there are several lenses available in this category. The description does not describe a homogeneous group of intraocular lenses and designs, and features such as the presence or absence of dysphotopsia depends on the optical principles. <coughs> The term does not describe a homogeneous group of intraocular lens designs, and issues such as the presence or absence of dysphotopsia depends on the optical principles. In addition, not all these intraocular lenses are well suited for use in combination with myopic defocus, as in monovision. Published data on uncorrected binocular acuity <coughs> demonstrates that the Rayner EMV performs well in this comparison when both eyes are targeted for distance. The priority in this design is to maintain quality, and when I tested contrast sensitivity in a pilot clinical study, there was no significant loss of contrast sensitivity either under photopic or mesopic conditions when compared to a control group with a standard negative spherical aberration, IOL. Glare and halos are not an issue with this type of lens design, and the Perth skyline at night does not show significant dysphotopsia with a monofocal lens or an EDF lens of this nature. This is quite unlike a multifocal or even an EDF IOL based on diffractive principles when viewing the same scene in the simulation. Although classified as extended depth of focus intraocular lenses, the category now includes low ad bifocal and trifocal designs, where light scatter and dysphotopsia are still manifest. In addition, when a modest level of myopia is targeted to improve near vision, these designs are not optimized for myopic defocus. Dysphotopsia may increase, unlike the Rayner EMV. Choosing an optical solution to address presbyopia is a compromise between spectacle independence and unwanted symptoms, and in my opinion, an EDFRL based on positive spherical aberration together with mini or modest monovision is a preferred solution. Multifocals may offer a greater chance of total spectacle independence, but the vision is less physiological, requiring monoptic suppression of conflicting images. The EDF principle provides better quality vision, particularly with respect to contrast and dysphotopsia. This is the reason why patient satisfaction is so high, in that you as a surgeon have a perfect hand and hold all the aces. An unhappy multifocal patient requiring lens exchange is something you read about, but do not need to experience. Nor do you need to spend significant chair time, as a solution of modest monovision with a positive spherical aberration IOL is suitable for the vast majority of patients. To end, on a philosophical note, this optical solution is something that I suspect many surgeons will select for themselves. And bearing in mind the ethics of reciprocity, it's therefore worth considering for your patients. Thank you for your attention.